I'm glad to be here. I'm, uh, I'm really glad to, to speak about what has been done on the field of uh, integration in youth work. But yes, as um, you said, Martin, uh, eight years back or so, uh, and a few years before and a few years after, uh, I was actually also studying political science. And I was working at Tallinn University, and this integration was exactly my research topic and my topic of interest and the field where I was working on at the university. Um, do, and, and this kind of um, conferences were also part of my reality, but I grew really, really, really... Um, um, Impatient. I was thinking, so what can we do? What can we actually do? So I quit. I started working at a language immersion school as a, a teacher of history and civics. And then at one instant, um, the director of the youth agency of Archimedes Foundation contacted me and said, you know what? We have this new program. And it's called Youth Meetings, and we would like to offer you to the position of, of running the program, of being the manager of the program. And after that, of course, I said yes immediately, uh, because I saw that I had known for a long time that youth is actually the key to uh, better cohesion in the society and changing uh, the attitudes. I still have 17 minutes, great. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and after that, I was in the constant mindset of, like, congratulations. Congratulations, you have made such a great step. You have made the right choice of uh, launching this program. So, yes, this uh, program was launched by the initiative of the Ministry of uh, Education and Science and also uh, with the cooperation of Estonian Youth Work Center and, of course, the Archimedes Foundation Youth Agency and is paid by the um, uh, gambling tax. We are using the money well. Uh, so, being here... Um, Ah, yes. Um, saying that it's the best integration program in Estonia, I know it's pro provocative because uh, there are so many um, integration uh, practitioners and specialists here in the room. I didn't come up with it. It is a nickname that has been um, used more and more by people who have been involved in the program, and I like it. So that's why I wrote it here. But what is youth meetings? Uh, it's a format of local Estonian youth exchanges only, except that the, the, the youth who meets, they have different mother tongues. And these mother tongues usually are Russian and Estonian. And as we know, uh, Estonian and Russian people have few contacts in Estonia, despite living side by side, even today, which is supported by the integration monitoring. So why not bring the youth together, actually, just support them in making projects together in partnerships. The projects can be about anything, about enhancing mental health of uh, peers or um, environment, like um, environmental issues or cleaning up your local forest um, or, um, I don't know, uh, renovating the bus stop, uh, whatever. Uh, th what the youth needs that needs uh, mending in their society, they come up with the idea, they find partners, and then they cooperate. So we are including uh, 1,700 approx approximately young people every year. So there are about 45 projects supported each year. And as, yes, the Archimedes Foundation Youth Agen Agency had uh, the experience of uh, conducting this international youth exchange, exchanges, that was the logical uh, next step. And the aim of the program, of course, is to uh, promote uh, awareness of each other, cooperation, contacts, um, uh, tolerance through just um, interacting together. And at one project, 16 to 24 youngsters uh, participate at a time. Uh, 
one meeting, one youth meeting um, is three to six days where they then cooperate together, but they can have at least one to three meetings in one project. And yes, the main target group is secondary school, so they do not have so many possibilities for um, youth work and carrying out uh, youth projects, especially internationally, so it's a good stepping stone for them to actually develop their entrepreneurial ship. And of course, when we uh, launched the program, it was also important to make a study uh, whether or not it's fulfilling its goals. And um, uh, the report was made by our darling Marianna here, <laughs> uh, so she carried out the analysis. But uh, we, yeah, we wanted to see uh, like both parts, whether or not it's fulfilling its goal uh, of integration, as well as youth work and youth participation. And we wanted to see if whether or not it uh, actually has an impact on uh, on, on the, the skills and um, competences of the youth. Because it is a um, non-formal education program as well, as well as it is an integration program. So we put everything in that we could. Once we're going to gather data, let's just let's try to get as much as, of information as possible. So we use the research-based analysis of Erasmus Plus Youth in Action uh, research questions, then the Estonian Open Identity Questionnaire that measures uh, national pride and um, uh, multicultural attitudes. Uh, then also we had the um, opportunity to use uh, two questionnaires from a research group that was uh, researching the general competences and their assessment in education. So we were allowed to use this uh, social competence questionnaire and citizenship competence questionnaire because, of course, when you are included in the civil society, of course, we want to see if the citizenship competence uh, arises. That would be a great um, argument for continuing the program and social competences as well. Many of these <laughs> Uh, general competences, uh, uh, me like measuring tools, were not in the survey form, but we could use these which were in the survey form. And yeah, we asked all sorts of different background questions and, and also about the impact of participation because we gathered the data before the project and then afterwards. And here, here's the overview we had. Uh, before participation, of course, everyone is more motivated to, to fill in the survey, so we had 45% response rate of all the participants. But after participation, the project is over, so yeah, I, had a, I really worked hard to get this 30% of uh, response rate, but nevertheless, uh, the, the numbers are quite good. So, And the, the average youngster was 14 years old who uh, replied and answered to this questionnaire. So, what did we find out? Actually, uh, the Estonian and Russian profile of the youth was not similar. Not really much. But there were some overall trends. For example, uh, they had few frequent contacts among people of other ethnicities and that did not change after the project. But of course, I, I'm, I'm going to show you, um, the slides are in Estonian, the, the graphs, I'm sorry. My digital competences are not as good as to make them to, into uh, English. So here I have uh, many frequent contacts, uh, question number one. It did not change, but you can also, um, uh, you can also it's, it's logical because it's, if uh, the measurement is done after the project immediately, they're not going to have time to have frequent contacts. We were, of course, expecting. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, they had really um, high interest in learning foreign languages and interest towards interaction with people of other ethnicities. So that um, uh, motivation was really high. So I'm going to show again. This is the question uh, six and nine. So that was the highest. They were very interested in actually interacting uh, with people of other ethnicities. What else? Uh, 
they were very uh, interested in participating in youth meetings in the future. So if I'm going to show you on this graph, if uh, uh, they were asked all sorts of questions like, um, how did what was the impact of these youth meetings on you? They were like, I know better now how people, young people live in other parts of Estonia. I know now better what I have in common with other young people in Estonia and so on. So actually the interest of participating, this is a four point scale, was the highest uh, average score you could have. I could really like to participate in this type of meetings in the future as well. Uh, what else was co common for, um, the both groups, uh, they were more active than the uh, youth in general. So they had more extracurricular activities, but nevertheless they had the same few amount of contacts that, uh, that uh, Estonian Russians have. And uh, there was um, the impact of uh, skills and competencies on Estonian youth and Russian youth was completely different. They had only two uh, attitudes or uh, two like there were two skills that similarly similarly were um, better after the meetings, and that was. Uh, significant impact of the capability of having good relations with other with people of different ethnicities. So that was similar. The rest was different. And logical reasoning. And no change across overall scores of citizenship competence. So we are here to talk about inclusive civil society, but the civic uh, civ citizenship competence did not change. But there is actually, actually, I think, a reason for that. I think the scale, if, when you look at it, it asks about voting, elections, uh, knowing about politics, discussing about politics. And we know from other research that actually youth is not so interested in politics. So if we want to actually measure citizenship competence, we would maybe ask different questions in the future. So what was different? Yeah, this impact on the Estonian youth after the youth meetings experience, we could characterize it with uh, this sign of empathy. Uh, and the impact was much bigger and much more uh, observable on the Estonian youth. So uh, I'm more aware of ways that young people live in other Estonian regions have higher awareness of what is generally going on in Estonia. I understand better what I have in common with the Russian youth. These were statistically significant influences after uh, the youth meetings, that these were higher for Estonians than for Russians. I feel more freely interacting in, in English, interesting for Estonians. Um, as compared to before the youth meetings, the empathy is even higher. I know that some people in our society have fewer opportunities than others. For me, it is interesting to interact with representatives of other ethnicities and social skills scores for Estonians were higher after the youth meetings, especially due to higher scores of pro-social behavior and interaction skills. Uh, for the Russian youth, this was already high. But the Estonian scores got more similar. And main changes in the skills that uh, uh, changed were related to carrying out the project, uh, cooperation, entrepreneurship, and so on. Uh, the Estonian Open Identity Scale before the youth meetings, uh, as kind of expected, the Estonian youth reported high scores on the national pride subscale and the lowest score of the single items were uh, one item that said in Estonia one should respect different views about history and the Estonian youth tended to uh, disagree with it. Now what happened after the meetings is a big, big surprise because uh, yes, as you can see, that the multiculturalism openness uh, had a significant rise for the Estonian youth. No changes, statistical changes of significance for the Russian youth. But there was this empathy and openness spike for Estonian youth. And if you can see this question in Estonia, no one should respect different views about history, has done a huge spike 
but no projects whatsoever were about history. No projects whatsoever discussed history. And as you can see, it's now even higher than the average for the Russian youth after, uh, after the uh, project experience. Uh, and I feel connected to all people living in Estonia, no matter what is their ethnic background. So this has a uh, significant spike as well. Yeah, for the Russian youth, there were much less changes. So we could actually conclude that uh, this kind of interaction and cooperation moments have much more impact on actually the majority group. Yeah, the Russian group. So they were, as expected and as seen in other research, more likely to see the future outside Estonia than their Estonian peers, still. Uh, and it was very interesting to see that dependent on the type of school they go to, they would have more or less contacts with Estonians. It's low anyway, but as you can see, uh, this is the Russian-speaking R Russian language of instruction and no, any other, no, there are no um, uh, classes in Estonian or no language immersion. And from here you can see that uh, the, the question says, I can say, um, with whom I, uh, I have frequent contacts with whom I interact. And completely agree is this blue. <laughs> and tend to agree is here. So this, the, the upper part, is the amount of contacts that I tend to have, and this is, um, it's hard to say, and this is, I do not agree. So, with the language uh, of instruction being Russian, you can immediately see a tendency to have less contacts, which to me is, I think, really important in Estonia as well. Uh, and what were the skills that actually raised, uh, became better, statistically uh, significant rise, were interacting with people with different mother tongue and making myself clear in Estonia. So we can see that actually the impact uh, that this experience had was on the uh, courage to practice the language, which is really important, which is a, uh, the courage is often the barrier, not the language skills to participate in the society and education and higher education, it's the courage. So I have a few um, uh, quotes that actually support what we found, and these quotes we can find our project in our project reports all the time. And for example, I could overcome my fear of interaction of doing or saying something wrong. These types of uh, feedback is really, really common. Or uh, from an Estonian-speaking youth, I learned that ethnicity says nothing about a person's essence or a Russian-speaking youth, the project had a really strong impact on me. Now I want to learn Estonian and interact in it. Uh, or a youth from Kurasara, Estonian youth, I would like to meet more new people with different native languages. I believe now more in my abilities and do not fear to learn new things. Or one quote from a youth leader as well, uh, one should not fear that the language barrier will prevent any interaction. Common activities will quickly break the barrier. And here I would like to tell a story, uh, my favorite story. Um, if there are people in the room who have heard it, I'm sorry, but I, I don't think so. So um, at the first year, this 2015, uh, I visited a lot of projects as well, as well, because I wanted to see how well they're doing. And then there was this really, really nice project in the northeastern part of Estonia. It was about um, bullying, and they wanted to uh, uh, learn skills to counteract bullying. And there were uh, kids from Yuhvi, Estonian-speaking, and Russian-speaking kids from Baldiski in Estonian town. And then there was a, uh, they had cooperated before, and there was a new guy. The new guy from Baldiski, let's call him Max, Maxim, it wasn't his name, but. And, and Max didn't speak a word of Estonian, which is also pretty common in these interactions. And, um, uh, I went to him and said, like, hey, Max, how are you doing in Russian? And, and now I'm going to say in Russian, and then I'm going to translate. And it's like, uh, очень здорово. Я с всеми общаюсь, ничего не понимаю. So, uh, 
I'm having a great time here. I'm, in, I'm, I'm communicating with everyone. I don't understand anything. So that is, <clears throat> uh, that, that is actually <clears throat> the key finding that um, uh, you, or the key experience from the project, uh, the program, that you do not need actually to speak the common language. You can interact without it as well. <clears throat> so the last slides, yes. What we found out, integration is not a symmetrical process. It has different impacts of different parties involved. And we do need to see or target the majority group uh, in assuring the cohesion. We cannot integrate any minorities. We have to integrate the majority. And of course, contact is key. And uh, as Eva said yesterday, yes, these are not shutterstock images. These are real pictures of the youth meetings, so thank you so much. <laughs>